What's going on, everybody? I'm Cigar Show Tim, and you're watching this week's edition of Tobacco Talk, where every week I review a cigar, and then I give you my thoughts on it. Flavor, draw, construction, burn, everything you want to know about that cigar, but it's from my pouch perspective, and then I rate it as whether I think it's nubworthy or not. So the cigar for this week comes from a manufacturer called Vario Cigars. I met the owner of Vario Cigars back at TPE in January, sat down and interviewed him. If you're watching on YouTube, you can click the link right up there, and you can see that interview with him. Uh, and if you're watching on Rumble or Odyssey or any of the other ones, just search in my um, library, my catalog, uh, Vario Cigars, based on the spelling that's down here in the title, and you'll get to it that way as well. So looking at the hat, this is a hat from Vario Cigars. It's got a duck and a sun on it, and they have a blend called Duck and Sun. It's a Habano. I'm a huge Habano fan, so this piqued my interest as soon as I heard about it. So this is the Duck and Sun Habano in Robusto size from Vario Cigars. There's the band. There's what it looks like. But you know, there's only one real way to check this out. Let's light it up. All right, so I went with my usual straight cut. Let's get some cold draw notes on it. Very sweet dried fruit. Really unique sweet dried fruit, a little bit of breadiness, maybe a little bit like a honey graham cracker. And like, moist like the smell of of moist soil interesting well let's toast her up okay upon initial light up strong woodiness it's light cedar but a strong woodiness a little bit of that sweeter note in there still it's like a sweetened honey graham cracker. I know there's the, like the honey one, so it's actually pretty close to that. Yeah, a ton of cedar wood, and then like a, a honey graham cracker. Yeah, interesting. All right, well, let's see what happens. I'm gonna sit with my friend the duck and be under the sun and go through the first third. Okay, let me show you where the burn is at the end of the first third here. A little focus. There we go. Got a little wave to it, but it stays together really well. The uh, first time it, the ash broke off, I actually broke it off because I thought it was about to fall. And it actually was still sticking together really well. So it is very well constructed. <clears throat> Flavor notes though in the first third. The woodiness continued. There was quite a bit of the cedar wood. It was very, um, very forward, very, very much, you know, prominent in the first third, followed by some of that honey sweetness. There's a, a little bit of like a breadiness in there and then nuttiness started to come through. So there's, there's a, a pretty good blend of some, uh, r you know, nice lighter flavor notes that are in this. The retro hill is very, very smooth, and that's where I picked up the nuttiness on it. I did not get it uh, without the retro hail, but burning well, uh, the flavor is good. The draw on it is right where I like it. It's not too tight, it's not too loose, um, and it's it, you guys know I'm picky uh, when it comes to draw, and this is doing very, very well. The construction, the burn, everything on it is doing great. So I'm going to jump into the second third. When I come back, I will give you more on the blend. Well, I will tell you what the blend is, let you know a little bit more about Duck and Sun and some information about, well, about the cigar. Okay, here at the end of the second third, you can see right here with the burn, how it's doing. Pretty close to being straight, doing well. Ash is holding on well. You can see him right there at the band. So when we look at um duck and sun and the meaning behind it it's got a lot of egyptian ancient egyptian history with it so i'm gonna read a little bit from vario's website feel free to go and check it out yourself uh, if you want to learn more about it but it says duck and sun means sa ra son of bra 
Uh, Pharaoh de Jeffrey was the was the son and immediate throne successor of Khufu and the first to connect his cartouche name with the sun god Ra. So that's the information on it. That's the reason behind the name. Let's talk about the flavor notes. The second third flavor notes were pretty similar to the first third, but there was a little bit of adjustment to it. The woodiness is still there, but the sweetness has turned into a vanilla sweetness. Uh, and then there's a nuttiness with it too. That nuttiness is still there. So it's, it's a, a woodiness with almost like an almond milk kind of flavor note to it because there's that, that, uh, that nuttiness with it. Um, and when you mix that with the vanilla sweetness, if you've had almond milk, you know that there's vanilla sweetener, sweetener in almond milk for flavoring. And so I, I picked that up, not specifically almond milk, but that kind of blend of flavoring in the second third. It's been really interesting. The draw on it is still very much where I like it. I would put the strength at probably, you know, barely into medium, not a strong cigar whatsoever, but the blend on it. The blend is an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. It's got an Indonesian binder and it has Dominican fillers. So everything from Vario, the country of origin on it is the D Dominican Republic. So everything comes from the DR. And that's the background on it. That's the naming of it. They've got really interesting backstories on every single cigar that they have in their line. So I really encourage you, if you want to learn more about that and you're into history, go and check out their website and uh, see what they have to offer and learn a little bit more about the reasoning behind the names. So I'm going to jump into the final third. I will come back and let you know my final thoughts on it, if there are any transitions and whether or not I think it's nubworthy. But until then, smoke on. All right, let's wrap up this review. You can see here from the burn, this is where it is at the end of the cigar. Got a little bit of a wave to it, but I mean, ash is still holding on well. So, flavor notes in the final third. They continue to develop. The nuttiness is uh, the most prominent flavor now. The woodiness is very much in the background. It's on the long finish actually, uh, especially when you retrohale. There's a little bit of a white pepper, uh, a little bit of a spice on my tongue and uh, it's a really interesting but good combination but the nuttiness is there like i mentioned but there's a prominent cinnamon note now and that cinnamon note ash on my shirt that cinnamon note there we go that cinnamon note is really good and complements the cigar well so i've got the woodiness i've got the cinnamon i've got the nuttiness uh, and that white pepper coating my mouth so that's how the cigar is wrapping up i've got a ton of saliva in my mouth i'm really enjoying the flavor combination of this cigar uh, i would say that this ends at a Pretty decently solid medium, still on the lighter end, but I'll call it a medium uh, strength. The draw on it has opened up a little bit in the final third. Didn't get too far open for me, but it did open up a little bit, but doing well. Uh, you saw the burn and all those different things. Tons of smoke output has produced a ton of smoke the entire time and been really, really enjoyable. So overall, do I think this is nubworthy? I do. I think this is a nubworthy cigar from a brand that I had never heard of until TPE in January, and I highly recommend you check them out. So uh, yeah, if you've heard of them, then put some comments down below. And if you haven't, you know, is this a cigar that maybe uh, hits your palate and is something that you would be interested in? Uh, this was the Robusto size. I believe it's a five by 50 uh, is the Robusto. And uh, yeah, that's about it on everything. So as I say, enjoy your cigar journey. I'm Cigar Show Tim. As always, I'll see you.